there all you good people. Joe from Joe's Computer Museum here. Today I'm going to review this little guy right back here behind me. This is an Apple IIe Platinum, one of my favorite pieces. I'm going to tell you about it, a little history of the computer, where I got it, and uh, we're going to show you some of the cards and pieces and the modifications I've made for it. Let's check it out. The Apple IIe was the third model in the Apple II family, and Apple's longest lived model, with a production run of almost 11 years. Apple planned to discontinue the Apple II series after the introduction of the Apple III in 1980, and boy aren't we glad they decided not to! When the IBM PC came around and the Apple III had flopped, Apple decided to give the model an overhaul in the form of the Apple IIe in January 1983. The new Apple IIe brought in some much needed features notably absent from its older brother, the Apple II Plus. The aux slot was a huge improvement, allowing an easy upgrade to 80 column text and double high resolution graphics. Improved character and keyboard functionality included lowercase letters, cursor control and editing keys, plus the now famous open and solid Apple keys. The reset key was moved to avoid accidents, and auto repeat was now a standard feature. Apple also lowered the production cost, reduced the design complexity, and improved the reliability of the machine through chip count reduction and better case design. The Apple IIe Platinum debuted in 1987 as the final version of the line, and was called Platinum due to the color change of the familiar plastic case. Most of the changes to the computer were cosmetic, including the addition of a numeric keypad and a general layout change of the keyboard to more closely match that of the Apple II GS released just one year earlier. The changes weren't all aesthetic, however, as electronic improvements were made as well. The extended 80 column card was factory installed, allowing 80 column text and double high resolution graphics available right out of the box. Apple also redesigned the logic board to use fewer chips again, and the shift key mod was permanently enabled at the hardware level. Changes were also made to clean up radio interference in the game I.O. socket circuitry, but these changes were sometimes frowned upon by hobbyists as it reduced the bandwidth of the socket. The firmware of the Apple IIe Platinum was the same as the enhanced Apple IIe that came before it. The Apple IIe Platinum said goodbye for the entire Apple II family line when it was discontinued on November 15, 1993. So I got this little guy right here behind me from a nice old lady by the name of Gislaine Quinn. Uh, she was a local resident here in my town, and she had used this uh, Apple II uh, for many years when she worked at the, uh, the local uh, joint vocational school, the local career center, um, in her role uh, in, a, in, a, in accounting there. Uh, when she retired, they let her have the computer. And uh, she took it with her and uh, started doing genealogy on it. She was an a interesting old lady from Europe, came over uh, during World War II, or at some point, I don't remember exactly. Um, uh, it came into my possession years later when she had uh, decided that she needed to finally upgrade uh, this computer to a uh, to a Macintosh. And uh, the problem is, is the Macintosh she upgraded it to was in 2009, and it was a 2009 Macintosh. So we're going from a 1990, or 89, 90, 91 uh, Apple IIe Platinum here to a uh, to a Mac for 2009. It was a Kind of an interesting scenario. We ended up using another one of the computers in my collection right over there uh, to uh, load the software, uh, our modern version of the software up. Uh, this thing, of course, has that three and a half inch floppy drive, so we were able to uh, copy the data to the three and a half inch floppy, copy it over to the other Mac, convert it, burn it to a DVD or to a CD, I think is what we did. And uh, then we copied it to the uh, the new 2009 Mac, and uh, we worked with the software company to get the, all the uh, all the uh, in-between versions of the software that she needed, and we ended up converting all her data from this thing to a brand new iMac running uh, Mac OS X. It was really cool. And uh, as a special thanks to, to us in the shop, she, uh, she let us keep the computer. Now there's a little argument between me and one of my coworkers. Uh, he wanted the computer, but he, uh, he knew that I had a, a computer collection, so I was able to nicely persuade him into letting me have it. And uh, that's how it's come into my possession. So now let's look at the hardware configuration of my Apple IIe Platinum. Let's start with the stuff on the outside. First, we've got uh, 
the pretty standard Apple II monochrome monitor. Can't really have an Apple II without that, can you? Um, I do have color TVs that I connect to it if I'm uh, dealing with color, but you know, 80 column applications really need a monochrome monitor to work well. You've got uh, the standard duo disc five and a quarter inch drive. Um, bog standard, a lot of these uh, Platinums were, uh, were ordered with one of these, of course. Uh, this guy here is a little oddity. He is a uh, three and a half inch drive. It is some generic thing. I don't know where it came from. It uh, must have come third party. It's not a Apple branded device at all, but it works really well. It's uh, very handy if I want to move files between uh, the Apple II and say my Apple IIc Plus or to my 2GS or to uh, one of the Macintosh computers. Um, this guy is an 800K drive, so that's pretty cool. Um, floppy or not floppy I'm sorry that is a mouse obviously uh, this mouse actually came with my laser 128 um, but I frequently use it with my Apple IIe Platinum and my Apple IIc and of course now here is the uh, the Platinum itself um, I have this thing loaded to the hilt so let's take a look inside let's dive right in and see what we got inside here so here's the guts of the Platinum 2E. I have it loaded to the very top with just about every everything you could think of aside from an accelerator card. Um, you'll notice a couple weird things uh, inside the machine here. We've got uh, a little piece of foam here that's actually like that uh, that uh, don't allow that non-stick slip stuff, but it worked well there. Piece of foam here piece of cardboard here. Uh, the cards in this Apple II like to move around a lot, especially this, this uh, card in slot uh, one there. It likes to come out of its slot a lot. I do not know why. So uh, I put in all these little bits and pieces there to keep everything in place so things don't shake around so much. I mean, they just, they don't move. Uh, in the aux slot uh, is a 64K 80 column card. Absolutely vital, obviously, to be able to get any real use out of the Apple IIe. Provide style, double high-res graphics, the extra RAM, uh, and 80 column support. Uh, the next one here is a Slinky card, or the Apple II memory card. This guy has one megabyte of RAM on it, and if you're running Apple Works 5, or you're running uh, the Apple II desktop software, it sees that Slinky card and can use it. It will uh, load all its modules in there uh, pretty nice and easy and make, uh, make everything run quite a bit faster for you. This is an Apple II Super Serial 2 uh, card. Um, I use that to uh, print to my Apple II uh, printer, or my, I'm sorry, my image writer printer, which is up there, but I don't do that too often. Slot 3 is empty, of course, because it has to be, because that's... Uh, a, uh, an old vestigial of the way the 80 column card works. You've got in uh, this slot right here, kind of hard to see uh, see in there, but the, that is a, an Apple, uh, or sorry, <laughs> an Apple II uh, mouse card, which of course is uh, connected to the cable there and connected to the mouse. Uh, this right here is uh, some sort of generic, I think VTech made it actually. Um, it is a, uh, a, 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 a card for the three and a half inch floppy drive there. Um, it is as generic as generic can get. There's no identifying marks anything anywhere on it. It's probably a clone of somebody else's card that was very, very popular to have uh, clone cards in the Apple IIe world. Um, this right here is an official Apple uh, 5.25 inch disc controller card. This one, if you can see in there, it's got the ribbon cable just stuck on there. It's not a removable cable. So this is the, uh, this is the card that was uh, very often paired with that guy. And uh, in slot 7 right there is uh, uh, a great little device. That is a uh, compact flash for Apple II card. Um, that's one of the uh, version one cards um, uh, that was uh, produced by Rich Dreher. Uh, shout out to him. He is awesome, obviously. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have the uh, user interface that you can, uh, you can get into to configure your card and do all that stuff. You got to put that card in, uh, in a PC and use uh, Cider Press to format it. But, you know, whatever. Uh, that's got... Uh, uh, Apple II desktop loaded on it. So whenever I want to use this thing, all I have to do is plug it in and flip the switch and it works. And I don't have to put in floppies, wait for things to load. Uh, and it's pretty sweet. 
Um, one of the final things we have in here, it's kind of hard to see, but you might be able to see it stacked in here. Uh, on my ROM chip there, I have an actual Dallas semiconductor, or it's called Maxim Semiconductor now. Uh, no slot clock in there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's eventually going to die because those, the batteries are epoxied in place. But the cool thing is, is the folks over at uh, Reactive Micro and, uh, and uh, Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Micro there make uh, new ones of those with replaceable, uh, replaceable batteries. So if you ever need one of those, you can pick one of those up and then you've got a uh, time and clock card or a date and clock uh, card for your Apple II. So uh, now we're going to uh, boot the computer up, uh, take a look at the whole thing and uh, see, see how things work. Now it's time to start this old girl up. Let's see how she does. As you can see, uh, it's copying the Apple II desktop into the RAM card. Um, because I got that slinky on there, uh, it copies it into that and makes switching between the uh, selector application and the desktop application work pretty fast. And uh, there's the selector. Let's go ahead and just uh, go to the desktop there. It's going to load into the desktop. It does that pretty quickly. It's going to enumerate the drives and do the thing that it always does. And uh, of course, this thing loaded straight off of the uh, the compact flash card, which is uh, pretty outstanding. We can go ahead and open that up. You can see the uh, file system I have on on there. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, Works uh, pretty well just to, uh, for playing around or whatever. And I uh, also have the, uh, <laughs> the ProDOS system utilities on here, so if I want to mess around with disks, I can just switch over that. Loads right up, and then I can uh, quit out of the disk utilities. Go straight back to the Apple II desktop. Basically, this is a... <laughs> an early Apple II GS environment uh, that I have running on a computer it was never really designed to run on, but uh, because they wrote the original version of this in uh, good old 6502 code, uh, or 6502C code, um, works uh, pretty well on this old Apple II. So now we're gonna uh, take a look at a video game, um, pretty classic video game, uh, old one I happen to like called Apple Cider Spider. And because video games always look better in color, we broke out the uh, old uh, color TV here so we can show you Apple Cider Spider in color. I'm going to go ahead and boot from the floppy so you get to see the, uh, see the title screen here. Takes just a second to load, and there it is in all its glorious color. Sierra Online's Apple Cider Spider. This is... Uh, very weird game. I guess you're a spider that crawls around a uh, applesauce or apple cider factory, I guess, and tries to uh, climb out of the factory without getting uh, uh, smushed by, uh, by apples or uh, drowned by apple cider or eaten by birds or eaten by frogs or whatever. Cute little game there. So I'm going to Give this one player and a keyboard. Uh, I, ILJK should be fine. And we're going to start with level zero because I am horribly bad at this game. But we're going to check it out anyway. So the object of the game here is to try to uh, make it over uh, to the top of this level. Oh gosh, I'm the worst at this game. Oh, let's see, can I make it to the top? I doubt it. I think the frog's gonna, frog's probably gonna get me. Or I'm gonna get him smushed or turned into applesauce or something. Almost, oh, and I get to reset all the way back to the beginning. Darn. Well, that's why I don't do gaming videos. I'm not any good at any of them. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and remember, 8-bits are all you need.
I see you, frog. You, you think you're so smug? You think you're gonna get me? I don't think so. What, what, you're jumping? No, 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 no. Don't give me any of that crap. Hey, hey.